Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be talking to you about how we actually go about creating a single button component that has multiple properties attached to it. So I'm gonna be using variants to achieve that. Now, if I click on any of these buttons, as you can see, it has multiple properties attached to it. This one has a primary property. It, it is a small size. It is in, sitting in the default state and it's not destructive. Similarly, if I go here, you can see there are multiple properties that are changing. The appearance is changing itself based on the values that you see here and the same goes here as well. So as you can see, we have two states, we have four sizes and we have, let's say four types of button here as well. And all of this is a single component. It's really easy to digest. Before I begin, I'd just like to say, do subscribe, do hit the notification icon and let me know if you have any comments, any questions and do also like the video if you like it. Let's get started. So in this video, we'll be quickly starting off exactly where we left off in the previous video for components. And we're going to talk about some of the benefits of variants and what variants are to begin with. Well, variants is just a much better way of organizing your components and making uh, the different types of properties applied to a com component much more visible. So as you can see here that once I select all of the button components that I've created apart from obviously the base structure, I can go ahead and I can click on this button combine as variants. And once I do that, I can see that this particular variant is named a button. It has multiple properties, which is property one, disabled, primary, secondary, and tertiary. I can say, okay, I want the primary to be the first one, secondary to be the second one, tertiary to be the third, and the last one to be disabled. I can name my properties. I can say that this is a type of a button. Uh, this is a property named type. Now let's say if I go ahead and drag one of these buttons from here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this button here, or I can also go to my assets, go to my components, and I can say I wanna drag this button. And I can obviously search for a button as well, and it's gonna give me the button that I'm looking for. So here I have this component and I can go ahead and I can see the different types that exist on this button. So I can say I want this to be a secondary, tertiary or a disabled. And as you can see, this is much more visual. Uh, this is much more easily recognizable. I can easily go ahead and I can play around with this. Now let's expand our button component to be much more powerful. So I already have this base structure component. <clears throat> I'm what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create multiple sizes of this base structure. So I'm going to say this is going to be the base structure medium. Similarly, I'm going to have another base structure, which is going to be, let's say, again, I'm going to detach it. I'm going to make it a component. I'm going to say this is going to be large. So for the large uh, button, I'm going to say that the padding on the left and the right is going to be, let's say, 20 and then let's say 20. And the padding at the top is going to be, let's say, 16 and then 16. I think let's just make it 16 comma, comma 24. So I'm gonna say this is the actual sizing. Also the font size here should, instead of 16, it should be uh, 18. And I'm increasing the font size by, by pressing the command shift and the greater than sign. So as you can see, we have a larger button here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, select both of these and I'm gonna say, I wanna combine these as variants. So now I'm just gonna, click the plus button and I'm going to say I also want to include another variant and it's going to ask me what the name of that variant is going to be so as you can see I have the large variant I have the medium variant I'm going to say I, I need a small variant now so I'm going to make it small and I'm going to say this particular variant instead of let's say having 12 and 16 all around it's going to have 8 comma uh, 16 that's going to be the padding of it probably 8 comma 12 is going to be much simpler uh, to make it more smaller and the font size instead of 16 is actually going to be let's say 14 and as you can see i have this button as well this is going to be a small variant similarly i can say i i want another variant as well in this base structure which is going to be extra small and as you can see it says property one so i'm just going to go to my main variant i'm going to say this is going to be a size property and I'm gonna say that this particular size is actually gonna have the padding of let's say four comma 10 or something along those lines. And the font size is gonna be even further smaller. So let's say 12 pixels. And as you can see, this is a really small button. So I have all of these base variants laid out. Now what I actually wanna do is I can see that the base variants, the base structure is actually uh, this particular like larger component is called the base structure and I have multiple variants in it. So I'm gonna create another property type i'm going to say i want to add a new property to the button component and this property is going to be named size now let's say i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to expand this and i basically want um to have let's say i don't know maybe all let's say all of these four styles applied for all of these buttons 
So as you can see, so I have I have these buttons and I, I'm basically saying that I want like, let's say separate sizes for them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag this primary uh, button. I'm gonna, let's say, drag it below. I'm gonna say the size for this particular button is gonna be, let's say, I don't know, um, small or probably, yeah, let's just, let's just start from the top. So this is gonna be a large button. This is gonna be a medium button. Then I have another button that's gonna be, let's say, small and then i have another button which is going to be extra small so i have all of these buttons and i'm just going to go here i'm going to say on the base structure this is going to be large this base structure is obviously inheriting some of the stuff from here this base structure is going to be medium which it already is this one is going to be small and this one is going to be um, extra small so i'm going to go to the inner uh, com component that's applied onto these larger components and i'm going to again structure it like this now you can see like I have all of these buttons and I can just go ahead and I can do the same thing with some of the other variants as well. So I'm not gonna obviously have this in the video. I'm just, Once I'm done, I'll actually resume the video from there. Yeah, so here are all the buttons that I've wanted. Here are all the sizes. Now, for example, if I actually go ahead and drag this button, as you can see on the right, we have all of these different sizes. I can go ahead and I can make, the, make it a primary medium. I can make it a primary small so on and so forth. And this is just really, really, really powerful. So I have this now. There's also some other thing that I'd like to do. I should, I would also like to add, let's say some of the states as well. So for example, I wanna go ahead and add uh, a hover state for all of these buttons and an active state. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy all of these buttons. Well, first of all, even before that, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say that I want to add another property on this larger button, which is gonna be a state. So by default, obviously we have the default state. And then uh, as you can see, like all of these properties are gonna have like the state of a default. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag all of the buttons here and I'm gonna just duplicate them. So now that I've duplicated them, I'm gonna say the state for all of these buttons is gonna be the hover state. And I'm just gonna go to these buttons. I'm gonna press enter to select uh, their inner children. And I'm gonna say, the background for this is gonna be slightly darker. And as you can see, we have the hover state here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same here. I'm gonna select these and I'm gonna press enter. And I'm gonna say the background for this is gonna be slightly, let's say grayish or something. So here I have the hover state for that. I'm gonna select uh, these buttons here as well. I'm gonna press enter. I'm gonna say the background here for these buttons should be, let's say slightly darker on the hover state and I'm gonna do the same thing on the disabled button here. I'm gonna say, well, probably the disabled button doesn't have a hover state, so we'll just keep it like this. And I think that's pretty cool. So now let's say if we go ahead and we copy this button and we look at this component, we can see that we have the, the types of buttons, we have the large, small, and extra small, the sizes, and we have the state. Obviously we can have multiple states as well. And come to think about it, Probably this particular, like this particular state, this particular type, like the disabled, isn't necessarily a type. I would say it's honestly like more of a state instead of a type. So I can obviously organize that uh, as a state of these buttons as well. But for now, let's just keep it keep it at that. There's one other thing that you can do with variants is let's say if I want to say that hmm, this button or there should be a property, let's say, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a property for add new property. I'm gonna say destructive. So whether it's a destructive button or not destructive, and I'm gonna say this is gonna have the values on and off. So by default, this destructive thing is gonna be on. I'm gonna say, for example, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag all of these, well, actually just go ahead and let's just drag all of these, these different sizes. And here you go. I'm gonna just gonna drag them and I'm gonna move them here. I'm gonna say all of these particular, these ones that I have on the on the right are actually gonna be uh, destructive on and all of these that we were just seeing right now. So let's just go ahead, let's just press Command Z. I'm just gonna move all of these at the top so I can see that these are on and I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of these here on the left. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be off. So primarily because obviously these aren't destructive. So now, for example, if I wanna actually add a destructive uh, property to all of them, I'm gonna select them and I'm gonna say it's on, so that works. 
and I'm just going to style them accordingly. So I'm going to press enter and I'm going to say that perhaps all of these buttons actually need to have a fill of let's say red or something. So I'm going to say this is going to be a red 400 background and um, there's not going to be a border on it and the text color that's going to be inside. I'm just going to press enter. This text color should actually be white. So I'm going to make all of this white. So I'm just going to say that irrespective of the button type, all of these can be destructive like that. So let's say if I go ahead and have a look at a button, I'm going to copy this button here. You can see we have a toggle for the destructive now. So if let's say I actually go ahead and I can, I, I can say that this is going to be do not click me or something along those lines. I'm going to make it a secondary button. I'm going to make it like really large. And I'm going to say that the state is default or whatever. Let's just keep the state default. And I'm going to say this is destructive. Once I do that, as you can see, it converts in, into a destructive button. So this is much more consumable. It's really easy to digest uh, what, what's going on, what the different states are. And now, obviously, if you want to say that uh, the button, the destructive styling of these buttons should also resemble uh, the overarching uh, type that it has. So I can just go ahead and I can say that uh, it should have a white fill similar to the buttons here. It should have a stroke of red. So I'm going to say it's going to have a stroke of red uh, 500 and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to say the text color for all of these is going to be red as well. So red 500 let's say. So as you can see we have that. Similarly I can go here I can select all of these and I can say that the destructive for this particular button is going to be so sorry i'm going to just going to press enter to select the base structure i'm going to say the destructive state for this uh, particular button is going to be slightly lighter and or even more lighter and the text in this case obviously is going to be slightly darker and red so that's the state here and for the disable let's say i just don't want to have a state so now if i go here and if i let's say or probably just here and I just copy this button. Uh, I'm basically going to the assets tab and the layer tab by using a shortcut which is option two for the assets option button for the layers. So I press option two, I'm gonna drag this button and I can say that I want this button to be do not click me and perhaps an alert here as well. So I'm just gonna enable the arrow on the left, let's say, and I'm gonna say, I don't know, alert or warning probably so yeah we have a button like that i'm going to say this is just going to be destructive and now i can change uh, the different styling as well i can decide which type of a destructive button it should be and as you can see that works and if i disable the destructive thing it works really well as well so yeah that's pretty much it in the end i'd just like to say do subscribe do let me know if you have any other questions any other concerns and if there's anything else you would like to know and i'll see you in the next video thank you